Howdy folks, Darren back with you. Welcome to 8th Day Chronicles. Glad to have you with us today. We're in the great outdoors. God's a great creation. God created this earth for our enjoyment, for our use, and for us to be good stewards of this land. And I love being in the outdoors. Hunting, fishing, trapping, camping, you name it. If it's outside, I like it. I love this spot. Uh, it's peaceful, it's down in a valley. It is pretty darn windy today and it is cold. Don't let this sunshine fool you. It is a cold winter day. Um, about 30 degrees and the wind is blowing heading to our campsite get us a small fire going get warmed up get us a hot cup of coffee uh and enjoy a few hours just out in the beautiful creation god gave us come along with us Got a little warm on the walk in. It's still pretty cold. Uh, I keep a few things here at our little campsite. I've got a, a fire grate right here that I made. It is heavy duty. Uh, I made this thing out of stainless steel. It is fantastic for cooking over. All right, let's get a fire going. Okay, folks, there is a few things. If you like to get out into the woods and into the outdoors and spend some time, whether you're a hunter or fisherman or hiker, trapper, whatever you do that's outdoors, there's a couple of things that I would recommend you always carry with you no matter what. If you're going for a 30 minute hike or you're going for a overnighter four day trip, there's a couple things that you should always carry with you. Folks, the number one thing you should carry with you, most people might think that it would be some kind of big huge machete or a folding saw, whatever. You can always find down limbs and stuff to make a fire in an emergency. But how are you going to start that fire? Very romantic to watch videos of someone using a bow drill, friction fires. And don't get me wrong, all that's good to know. Because you, you need to know some of that stuff in case you don't have this. And you're crazy if you don't carry one. Big a Bic lighter. Matter of fact, in my pack, there's three of these things. Never go to the woods. If you're not a pipe smoker, a cigarette smoker, cigars, whatever, that don't matter. Stop at the store and buy you some disposable Bic lighters. The biggest single emergency outdoors piece of equipment you can carry. I carry a Bic lighter two or three of them with me if I'm on the boat fishing, if we're camping, I'm gone hunting, uh, whatever the case may be, I've always got a big lighter on me. Second item you need to carry, pocket knife. This is just a little small, about a three inch case. You can see it's a two blade. Excellent knife. Notice the color. The orange. I can lay this knife down anywhere and then I can find it in the leaves on the grass. Make sure you get a very bright colored pocket knife to carry. 
Okay, pocket knife, invaluable. Always in my pocket, always. When I get up in the mornings, a pocket knife goes in my pants pocket and it's there until I take those pants off at night to take a shower uh, to go to bed. Second item you need to carry is a little more substantial knife. Okay, this is a custom made knife in a custom sheath. It's made out of high carbon steel and it's designed in the sharp finger. If you're familiar with Schrader old timers, this is in the configuration of a sharp finger. I carry this anytime I'm in the outdoors. I got an empty, old empty medicine bottle. And a ferro rod with a striker attached to it. Okay, what's in the old medicine bottle? This is a surefire fire starter. If my lighters, I've lost them somehow, this is contained. You can see the size of this pill bottle compared to my hand. It's not a big one. This contains about eight, if I'm not mistaken, cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. Create your tinder bundle. Put this cotton ball right under that tinder bundle. Hit it with a spark from your furrow rod and you got a fire. Uh, Vaseline is basically petroleum. Works excellent even in wet conditions and it's wet here today. Uh, even though the sun's out, yesterday we had intermittent snow squalls and the sun has melted it today. We had intermittent snow squalls and rain and rain and rain for the last two to three days and everything here in the woods is just wet. Uh, this and this will get you a fire going if you don't have this. So, um, the next thing, carry you some kind of a light, a little flashlight, some sort of a rechargeable or battery powered uh, light. But if, I've, if I can make fire, I'm good. Now, food's another issue, and I'm not a, I'm not a bushcraft survivalist. Um, hopefully, before you get starved, you'll get rescued if you're lost and you're like me. I'm not a survivalist. However, I like to think if something goes down, I can survive for a while. But even just for emergency, carry you a few emergency supplies that will see you through. If you fall in a creek, you fall in the lake, and hypothermia is starting to set in, that happened to me once in mid-December on a fly fishing trip high in the mountains. The river water temperature was only in the 30s, high 30s. I accidentally slipped and fell into the river and water went down my chest waders and within 30 minutes I was almost hypothermic. Me and my buddy were able to get up on the bank, get a fire going in 10 minutes. We had a fire roaring and I was warm. Carry this stuff with you no matter what you're doing in the outdoors. All right, I'm cold. Let's get a fire going. Okay, what I'm looking for now is this, when I've split this wood up, I'm looking for the heartwood. It's the center of that wood. It's gonna be is the driest piece there is. Right there it is. All right, it's a piece of it. I'm gonna get the outer edge off. 
There we go. Right there's where our tender bundle will come from. This is gonna make tender. Little thin strips. Okay, I think that'll do it. That is some quite damp wood, but you can see how that cotton ball is just keeping burning. Cotton ball and Vaseline. This little peel jar here will hold about eight of them soaked in Vaseline. And with a Ferro rod and a striker, you can use the back of your knife. You got a fire. Oh, that warmth, that fire feels so good. If you're ever out in a survival situation and you're lost, and like I said, I'm no survival expert. But I can tell you this from just experiences being in the outdoors and getting so cold that you're almost hypothermic. A fire will change your mood so fast. Uh, it just makes the whole situation better. Know how to make a fire. Oh, that feels so good. Now it's about time for some coffee. Okay, a few things I carry in my backpack. Number one, a coffee cup. A pot to boil water. This is just an old campfire coffee pot. And here's something. There's my coffee and some egg, an egg. And here is something that I have started carrying that I absolutely love. A French press coffee pot. All I gotta do is boil water. We have a spring right over here uh, that where we can capture right where the ground, I found where the spring comes out of the ground and got a place where we can capture cold, clear, cool mountain spring water. What better to make your coffee out of? All right, let's get our French press ready. With a French press, you simply just dump your coffee into the pot. I tell you, in your life, you need a time your busy, hectic day to day to get away occasionally. And I can't wait for some coffee because I got me a boiled egg ready to go too. I'm getting hungry. Mmm. That's so good. Something I enjoy by the campfire. A good cigar. Uh, 
This one was given to me by a good friend of mine that uh, passed away about three years ago. And I've been saving it for a special occasion. Uh, I think this is it. I see a big old deer right over there. Looks like a doe. Well, this time of year it could be a buck. Lost its antlers, just staring at me. Well, there it goes. It's turned around, walking away. I'll never get the camera on it. And I had to move the coffee pot a little closer to the coals. It's so windy out here today that uh, I'm not real keen on building a very big fire, just because of the wind. So I just lowered my water down onto the coals and uh, should be boiling any minute. I done got my grounds in my French press. Cowboy coffee, don't get me wrong, I like cowboy coffee. Um, I've drunk a lot of cowboy coffee, but everybody says, you know, put some, dash it with cold water, put some eggshells in it, you hear all sorts of things to make those grounds settle. Uh, I don't like grounds in my coffee that I'm drinking in my cup. And I've yet to have any cowboy coffee that I couldn't get a ground or two out of and taste while I'm drinking it in my mouth, which I don't like. That's why I went with a French press. Really, really like this thing. It's as good as cowboy coffee, maybe better. And you get no grounds in your cup. Oh yeah. Okay, first off, we're gonna fill up the French press about halfway with boiling water. Okay. We're gonna take a wooden spoon, very important, a wooden spoon Speaking of wooden spoons, never use metal or plastic in your cast iron, use wood. Okay, we're gonna take our wooden spoon, we're gonna stir this half a pot, boiling water and grounds. Okay. We're gonna let that sit for about uh, 30 seconds, minute. We'll put our water back on the fire, get it boiling again. Water's back to a very hot rolling boil. And we're gonna put her on or cap it. We're gonna let that sit there for about five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes with how a French press works. Now you take the, the plunger and you slowly push it down. What it's doing is pushing all those grounds to the bottom. You don't push too hard just till it gets firm. Okay, there we go. We've got an excellent pot of coffee here now. Oh, that is good coffee. <sighs> wow. Catching that water right out of the ground, boiling it over an open fire, over hot coals. Good, great day is that good coffee. You can see how cold it is out here. The steam coming off my cup. It's still pretty cold out. That fire feels so good. Sun's not far from setting. And uh, pretty quickly, I'm gonna start making my way out of here. It's been an enjoyable day. It's been a cold day, but enjoyable. The weather man is saying the next couple of days, we're going to get three inches plus of rain. It's 
It's been really cold, but we're getting a warm front coming that's supposed to, the temperature's supposed to rise into the 50s and abundant rain. So it was a good day to get out today, even though it's cold. If this cold weather would stuck around the temperatures with that much rain coming, boy, we'd been in a blizzard. Um, we had some snow yesterday, but it was just flurries and My wife makes fun of me for a high, and after I sip coffee, it's just that good to me. <laughs> uh, I love it. One of God's gifts to man was coffee. Bad as I ate to, the sun's about to go down. It's time to uh, pack up and get out of here. I didn't come from an, for an overnighter. Now I wish I had of, but uh, bring me a bag and a tarp and stayed the night but it's time to head on out and uh, get our coffee pots cleaned up and uh, that my french press pot's not empty yet i may just carry it out just make sure these ice coals are all out dump some water on it and uh look forward to the next time so thanks for being with us here today on the channel not on the farm today <laughs> we're here uh in the woods and uh, the forest and we've really enjoyed our day a cold day it's got cold again you know just a while ago i put my coat back on it's it's been a cold day and an enjoyable day a day away from the farm and doing farm chores and a day spent out in the woods and we've really enjoyed it and thank you so much for being with us here a little bit different for our channel i realize that we've started the the farmer hobbies playlist and that's where this video will go uh, we're no survivalist experts, nothing like that. We're just simple people that enjoy what God has given us to enjoy. And uh, we love it outdoors and out in the woods. God bless you and your family. Pour yourself a good cup of coffee while you're watching this video, I hope. And I pray that God blesses you and your family and hope y'all have a great day.